I'm about to prove you that Jesus Christ, God bless him, is a continuation of ancient sun god worship. I'm not going to tell you to look it up. I'm going to prove it to you. Okay? I'm going to establish Jesus Christ as the sun in the sky. S-U-N. Okay? Here we go. First of all, the name of the Egyptian sun god is Amen Ra. Did you know that when you go to church and say Amen at the end of your prayers, you are paying homage to the Egyptian sun god? You are. Your preacher should tell you that. Why don't you say, all hail to the Egyptian sun god, in whose name we pray, instead of saying Amen. That's his name. Now, with me, go to page 1004 in the Bible, Revelation 3, verse 14. Revelation 3, verse 14. And Jesus Christ says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, these things say the Amen. Jesus Christ calls himself the Amen, which is the name of the Egyptian sun god. One for me. Okay? Let's go. Let's, let's try another one. Matthew 9, page 784. <clears throat> Matthew 9, page 784. You know, what's the sense of just saying amen without knowing what it means? It doesn't mean the prayer is over. It's the name of the Egyptian sun god. I mean, if you meant it to say the prayer, why did they, I wonder, why did they use the name of the Egyptian sun god to say the prayer is over? Okay. Yeah, they think it means something else. It, you can make it mean anything you want it to mean. It does. See, you could say, I believe it means so be it. So what you've taken the name of the Egyptian sun god and said, I believe it means so be it. The point is, you could use so be it. You could find a word that says that's the end. You didn't. You used the name of the Egyptian sun god. Amen, Ra. Now, Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Page 784. I'm going to give you another inference that Jesus is the sun god. Okay? Matthew 9, verse 15. Okay? Here's Jesus talking. Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? He had just referred to himself as the bridegroom. Okay? Jesus has referred to himself as the bridegroom. Go with me to page 471. The book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 19. Psalm chapter 19. This is interesting. Jesus refers to himself as the bridegroom in Psalm chapter 19, verse 4. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a... What? Bridegroom, bridegroom coming out of the chamber. The Bible said, and the ancients referred to the sun in the sky as the bridegroom. Jesus has called himself by the name of the Egyptian sun god, Amen. He's just referred to himself as the bridegroom. That's two for me. Three. Two and one is three. Oh. Now, let's go. Are you ready for this? Now, for those of you who have not been here before, let me show you proof of what I'm saying right now. You cannot question this. And I'll tell you why you can't question it, because it's an astronomical, universal fact of the cosmos. There's nothing you can do to change it. You ready for it? Here we go. On December the 21st, which is very close to now, the sun in the sky goes through the constellation Crooks which is called the cross. It happens on December the 21st. It doesn't make any difference whether you believe it or not. It doesn't make any difference whether the pastor believes it. On December the 21st, the sun is crucified. And I'll tell you something else. It's the shortest day of the year. It's the darkest day of the year. It's December the 21st. Okay? Now, you ready for the next one? On December the 22nd, December the 23rd, and December the 24th, the sun is entombed in the bowels of the earth three days and three nights. It's called the winter solstice. The sun is crucified, 
and is entombed three days and three nights, December the 22nd, December the 23rd, and December the 24th, and it's called the Winter Solstice. On December the 25th, December the 25th, the day that we call the birth of God's Son, Christmas, the Son, by the trajectory of the Earth, is born, literally born, and begins its upward arc out of the bowels of the Earth on December the 25th. Here you have it! The Son is crucified on December the 21st, which is the shortest day of the year. It is entombed in the bowels of the Earth during the winter solstice of December 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And on December the 25th, the Son is born again. Now, 30 years after he's born, Jesus has entered into the water man of John the Baptist. 30 days after the sun is born on December the 25th, it enters into the constellation Aquarius, which is the water man. In the spring of the year, the burnt offering takes place. The sun consumes the constellation Aries, and the ancients would call the constellation Aries, Ram of God, which takes away the cold of the winter. We changed it to Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. When the sun consumes that lamb, that ram, it then moves to the, in the east, northern hemisphere to the eastern sky, and summer comes. The sun is crucified. It sits in the tomb three days and three nights. It is born of a on, the, on, on December the 25th. It enters the waterman Aquarius. It is the burnt offering which consumes the Lamb of God. And then it sits at the right hand of power or the right hand of the Father, and summer comes to your life. And the reason that this all occurs is because in the center of your abdomen is a place called the solar plexus, which is the place of the sun. And through the meditation prescribed by the Bible, when the energy is allowed to rise and crucifies the lower flesh, you sit in the tomb of meditation, you are reborn to rise up to that which is the pineal gland of the brain, which is the symbol of Aries, which opens up the right hemisphere of the brain, and summer comes to your life, the winter of your soul ends, and that's why Jesus Christ said, if you want to find, cast your net to the right side. John 21, 6. And the sun ends its journey in August. It becomes Leo, king of kings and lord of lords. And then you know what happens? It starts its journey all over again in September. The sun is born of a virgin, Virgo.